How do I write a bass line? Well, sometimes it's an accident. You play something and you think, oh, I like that, I'm gonna use it. Other times you need to have a little bit of the musical theory down. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. In years gone by, the bass player had the job of playing the root and the fifth note to accompany whatever else was happening, if you're in a big band or a country band or whatever. And actually that is still true today. And actually just playing the root and the fifth does allow you a little bit more rhythmic control. And also, of course, we are playing for that top line. So we don't wanna get things too wrong, too complicated. So what I've got here is my root in the fifth in the key of C. Now I've chosen the key of C because anyone who's watching who is programming bass synths on a keyboard or on a piano roll will find this a bit more useful. So for bass guitar purposes, we're at eighth fret on the fourth string. So there's your C and the G. Now that's usually what happens with the, the root in the fifth. You just go up five letters, C, D, E, F, G. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to come up with a bass line with four different chord types. We've got the major, we've got the dominant seventh, the minor seventh, and the major seventh. Now these really do represent very the vast majority of rock and pop music, and some other chord types are also incorporated in this group. So let's get started with the major chord. I've got a garage band backing track with just a chord and some drums, a chord of C, and I'm gonna play a bass line over it just using the root and the fifth. Okay, it's all right, rhythmically, it's important to make sure that if you've got the root and the fifth like that, that you're rhythmically strong against those drums. I mean, if you did something like this. It's not gonna gel as well. So the bass player's job really in this context is more like the drummer's job. So you could, you could use the bass drum as the C and the snare as your fifth. So if I just go a couple of, couple of beats in, three, four. So I'm going with the drummer there. Now we're in a major key, which means that there is a scale associated with that. And that is the major scale. So starting on eighth fret, second finger, we've got C. And then last finger on D, 10th fret. Next string, we've got E with your index finger. Then F with your middle finger. And then the fifth, the G with your last finger. Next string, index finger on A. And then your annular finger on B, which is ninth fret. And then last finger on C, which is the end of your scale. So you've got the C all the way to the C there. Now I could use bits of that scale to play over this chord. I don't want to get too scalic here because we've got to also play for the song. If there's somebody singing and the bass player's going, mm, it's not going to work. So, three, four. I used all of the notes of that major scale to create a bass line and actually it was a little bit complicated. So we've got to work out what notes we can take away perhaps from that. Now that leaves us with something called the major pentatonic. We've got the notes are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Where eight is actually one again. You wouldn't refer to an eighth really. Um, it's back to number one. So there's seven different notes in your scale. The major pentatonic doesn't use the fourth one or the seventh one. It uses all the others. One, two, three, five, six, and eight. My girl, my girl. major pentatonic. So playing it in C would sound a bit like this. 
three. And then I used a little fill at the end, which was basically that scale coming down. I went. That sort of thing, just to come back down towards your root note. Now, the fifth note is like the second most important note after the root. So I need to make sure that rhythmically I place that correctly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Now the bass line for my girl is a little bit different. You got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But if I was going to simplify that bass line, I would make that root note maybe beat three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it just underlines the sort of where beat three is, where the, the other strong beat of the bar is. Now I know in rock and pop it's all about the back beat, about two and four, that's where the snare is. But essentially when you're playing a bass line you need to make sure that you've got all of these things in place. So the major scale has the major, uh, sorry, the major chord has your major scale and the major pentatonic. Now the major pentatonic also means that chords of the sixth, if you see C6 written, that is basically a C chord with an added sixth, which is that note, A. So you could make something of that in your chord. Whereas maybe in a major chord, you might decide to accentuate the fifth instead. So that's your major chord. So you can use any of these notes to create your bass line, but try and start on the root. You can sort of experiment with starting on other notes, but usually you'd have the root note. That's the bass player's job, predominantly. The root could be at the top. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's quite high up for the bass, but it's still there's enough tone to make it sound bassy. So the next chord then is the dominant seventh. Now this is a chord that is predominantly used in blues and jazz and sort of funk music. You know, if you've got James Brown, that, that Sex Machine. Now that's in the key of E flat. We'll work in C here, but essentially there is another note that is a little bit different from your major scale and it involves the seventh note. So we end up with something called the Mixolydian mode, which does this. So it's just the seventh note that's different from your major scale. So if I've got my dominant seventh um, uh, chord now, I'll just uh, go a couple of beats before the end. So I've got my dominant, or I've got my flattened seventh of the scale. It's called dominant for sort of more historical reasons to do with chords in a key. That's a different a different scope uh, from this uh, from this demonstration. But dominant seventh, or just seven, if you see C seven, that means dominant seventh. And it's all to do with that seventh note. Now as a bass player, you don't necessarily need to play that note, but it's quite cool because you can go. If I went down. Although my first note of C here is in this pattern, I went actually went down two frets to find that flattened seventh. So we've got the Mixolydian mode, which is the major scale. 
but with a flattened seventh. Now there are ways of memorizing the modes in terms of scales starting on different notes, or rather modes starting on different notes of the major scale of that parent scale. But really as a bass player, it's about adjusting the notes. So think of Mixolydian as a flattened seventh with respect to a major scale. So minor seven. Now, things are a little bit different here because we still got the flattened seventh, B flat, but we've also got a flattened third, which is what makes a minor thing. Now, minor seven and minor, we can pretty much group together in one go, really. So your minor, you've got this. We've got something called the Dorian mode now. Now notice the, the position change as well. I'm starting on my last finger on C, then I've got D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, and then C. I could do it the here, but it involves stretching that last finger on the second string a bit. That's okay, we can, we can deal with that. So in terms of the bass line, really the same thing applies. You've got your root and your fifth, which is there now in this, in this position or there in the other position. And we can create a bass line that has the flattened third and the flattened seventh in it. So there's C minor. We have the Dorian mode, which is the flattened third and flattened seventh with respect to a major scale. Here's the major. So there's your third, which we flatten. There's your seventh, which you also flatten. Now, of course, on bass or any other string instrument, a note can be played in more than one place. And that's fine. Lots of, um, sort of rock songs are in minor keys. Now it depends on the complexity, it depends what the vocalist is doing. You might do just something sort of more basic like this. Lots of it is about the rhythm, it's about keeping with those drums, the drums and the bass player being the sort of the driving seat of that groove. And you don't want to sort of waver away from that for the sake of technical complexity. So that's your minor. And then we've got major, major seven rather. Uh, now major seven has, has a different, has another note that adds to your major chord. A major chord does this. Whereas a major seven chord, you've got that sort of, that sort of dreamy quality. So you've got C, E, G, and B as your chord. C, E, and G just makes C major, whereas C, E, G, and B, that B grating with the C slightly, gives you that sort of dreamy quality of the major seven. Now the scale, for major seven is very similar to major, but we've just got to be a little bit careful with playing a root note that's too high up. So for example, in my major chord could do this. Whereas my major seven could do something like that, where you're making something out of that major seven note. The scale, the uh, C major scale will still work but there is another mode that we can use just to make things a little bit more interesting. And I'll just destroy, uh, I'll describe that in a minute, I'll destroy it, I'll describe it in a minute.
So, having said I was going to destroy... Yeah. Okay, so we've got this. Our major scale. But there is another note that we could use. And this is called the Lydian mode. Now, what the Lydian mode does with respect to a major scale is to sharpen the fourth note. You think that doesn't really sound right? It sounds all sort of a bit... Like the proportions are all wrong. Let's see if it works. bold I'll give you that now what you can do with a major seven you could use the sharp and fourth which is now F sharp to actually slide onto your fifth note so they actually you're playing the Lydian mode but you're just giving that little sort of teaser of that sharp and fourth The baseline to Omar's There's Nothing Like This makes really extensive use of that major seven note, the B. And if I slowed this down a bit to maybe, uh, you know, uh, yeah, 60, you can hear how this works. Three, two, B. As I said before, we've got to be a little bit careful with this major 7 lark in the bass because actually if you play your major 7 higher up it's less likely to clash with the C that's underneath but somebody might be playing a C in the keyboard here and if you've got your B there, which I could play there we have something called a minor ninth interval which can be, well, it can really, really create a lot of problems. So if your keyboard player is not playing the root note at all, you're in the clear. And actually, usually a keyboard player who is playing a major seven will often get rid of that root note, just have, a, have the seventh instead, which means that you do have much, much more freedom. So if something grates, it could be that there are, there are there's a root note a little bit higher up somewhere. So there we are, there's, the sort of my take on how to make a bass line. It's all about rhythmic groove and simplicity first, and then you can start adding other notes and making little riffs up. So start simple. Don't forget that the root and the fifth works over any of these chord types, so that you're absolutely in the clear. If you use root and fifth on anything, it'll always work. And that's a nice sort of get out of jail free card.